welcome to Zoonosis with Joy. I'm Joy and today we're going to be talking about chronic wasting disease and a little bit about reindeer as I promised. So what is chronic wasting disease? Chronic wasting disease or CWD is a form of a prion disease exclusive to cervids. So things such as white-tailed deer, elk, reindeer. These are not viruses or bacteria or parasites but actually a misfolded protein. Prion diseases include things such as BSE, which is bovine spongiform encephalopathy, better known as mad cow disease. There's also scrapie, which is one that affects sheep and causes them to scrape their heads on rocks. And you can also have um, crucial jacobsons disease, which is the human form of mad cow, or as well as Kuru, which is a prion disease exclusive to human cannibals. Very fun. Now, chronic wasting disease and other prion diseases Basically what they are is a misfolding of proteins that infects other proteins in the body. So I have a protein here, this is a piece of paper. Proteins are determined, you know, by not only what they're made of, this is made of paper, fiber, you know, pulp, but also their shape. So the shape of a paper determines its function, and the same thing is true of a protein. So this piece of paper I can write on it because it's nice and flat, I can print off documents on it, whatever. However, I change the shape of it. I change its function. I'm going to turn this into a paper airplane. It's not going to be useful for writing on or for printing on, but I've taken something with an identical composition and I've turned it into something else. So when we have these sort of things, uh, Prions, basically what they do is they take this nice fold, folded protein structure and they shape it into something completely different. This will now, you know, find other proteins that are nicely folded and change their shape as well. And this is how it will infect an organism and spread throughout the body. So it's going to take all the nice proteins that have been nicely folded and mess them up. <laughs> um, this is also very hard for the nerve, uh, you know, the immune system to deal with. So the immune system normally it will bind to um, it will bind to different kinds of uh, antigens on viral particles, on bacteria, on parasites. But with prions, nothing for it to bind onto. Um, basically, this prion will spread throughout the uh, body and cause tissue damage until the animal dies. Typically, that's the lymphatic or the nervous system tissue. This is typically seen in other kinds of prion diseases, such as uh, BSE, the mad cow I mentioned, scrapie, Kuru, crucial Jacobson's, that kind of thing. It's also true of chronic wasting disease. So what happens is once an animal is infected with a chronic wasting disease prion, over the course of months, usually up to 16 months, this animal will start to have chronic wasting. So they will start to lose weight and they will start to show nervous system problems as it spreads throughout the nervous system. Of course, the nervous system does a lot of important things in the body. So it controls salivation. So these animals will salivate a lot they will have regurgitation because their esophagus can't contract normally, which can cause aspiration pneumonia. The body part, uh, the, the parts of the nervous system that control water intake will go offline and go haywire. So they will drink lots of water and they urinate frequently as well. They also will have lots of problems with mentation and their behavior will be abnormal. They will eventually um, die from this condition and oftentimes they will suddenly drop dead. This is often diagnosed on post-mortem, so they do a what's called a necropsy, which is the veterinary word for an autopsy. Autopsy means study of the self, necropsy means study of the dead. So we call it a necropsy in veterinary medicine. It's the same thing as like autopsy in humans, basically. But once we, you know, we would do that and then we would take samples of the nervous system tissue and test it out for something like chronic wasting disease. You know, you want to think about other things that can cause issues with the nervous system like rabies. Um, kind of similar in that sort of way, it often presents very similarly. Um, although typically you don't see um, deer getting rabies, it's not a very common thing for them to get, and anything's possible really. Um, so, chronic wasting disease is different from those other kinds of prion diseases because unlike other kinds of prion diseases, it spreads readily between individuals within the same population. If you think about mad cow, I don't know if you were following that, I'd probably have to make a full video about that itself, but uh, mad cow was spread through neo-cannibalism, which is a cool world. Uh, it's not a cool world, it's a cruel world, uh, and it's a cool word that basically means uh, human beings introduced cannibalism into the system for cattle. So humans were feeding parts of cattle to other cattle 
to bolt them up for, for market. Um, this included nervous system tissue, which is how they would acquire this prion, and they would become infected by it. With uh, humans that eat other humans, they'll eat their brains, they get kuru. So the prion will go from the brain of the affected individual, the person who eats it becomes infected with kuru, and then if someone else eats them, they get kuru. So, fun times there. With chronic wasting disease, it spreads through the feces, the urine, and the saliva, as well as through cadavers in the environment. And then it will stay in the soil, where other deer will start eating the grass or encountering the soil particles, and they will become infected. And over the course of months, they will start shedding this out, and eventually they will die. But it takes a very long pro disease progression. It's almost certainly fatal once they're infected with it, though. Um, so it does become issues that way. Now, this is a relatively recent sort of thing that we've discovered. It was only discovered back in 1967 by the, um, in Colorado, I think it was the University of Colorado. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but it was in the Western United States and has spread throughout North America over the last 50 years and now has shown up in Europe. And this is where it brings to reindeer. Now, reindeer and caribou are a bit different, um, but they're closely related. Caribou are North America, reindeer are in Europe. In 2016, um, the reindeer in Norway started becoming the first case of chronic wasting disease in Europe. Now, reindeer are tricky because they're herd animals, unlike other kinds of deer, which tend to form smaller kind of groups. But what happened is that uh, we don't know exactly how it got over there, uh, but what seems to happen is that once it got over there, the prion would um, infect male reindeer and they would go visit other herds, which were mostly female reindeer, and spread it geographically. And since then has spread throughout much of the Nordic countries, you know, you think uh, Norway, Sweden, Finland, that kind of thing, and affected the uh, free roaming and captive reindeer herds there. Um, this becomes an issue because, of course, they're such large herds that it can spread pretty quickly once it's within a herd. Um, again, it doesn't really affect reproduction that much because, you know, you have to understand that they can become pregnant around a year old, uh, eight months old, that kind of thing. So a female can become pregnant with her calf, raise a calf, and then by that point she would probably die. So these animals can actually get to a reproductive age and reproduce and then spread it to their offspring that way. Um, for males, of course, um, they're much more likely to become infected because they're moving between herds and they're also spreading it more likely. So there's actually a higher incidence in male reindeer than female reindeer. But this has become a major issue. So what can be done about chronic wasting disease? They're trying to develop a vaccine. Again, the immune system is very bad at recognizing this, so there's been some major roadblocks with that. Um, at this point, basically, control and containment seems to be the major strategy, so identifying surveillance, uh, which herds are affected, and trying to prevent the spread from other herds. Can this infect human beings? There's been some debate about that. Doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, with chronic wasting disease, they've actually experimentally infected some kinds of monkeys with uh, the uh, prion disease, nice stuff, right? Which doesn't seem to have a huge amount of interrelation with human beings, but not human primates are very similar that way. So theoretically, there is a potential that they could cause zoonotic disease. There's never been a reported case of it so far. Do you wanna be the first person to get chronic wasting disease? Put it down in the comments, I don't know. But um, if you are eating deer from affected areas, Basically, you want to be uh, not eating any of the nervous system tissue, the pancreas, or any of the lymph nodes or lymphatic tissue. The, you should be good otherwise, but, you know, there's always that kind of low-level uh, probability, but high catastrophic risk factor if you actually do get it. There's not much they can do for you if you get infected with a prion disease, unfortunately. So, um, that's kind of really all I had for this video. Um, kind of a brief, quick and dirty sort of summary of chronic wasting disease reindeer, and prions. Uh, so uh, let me know in the comments if you were confused about any of that, or if you have questions, or if you have any recommendations for future videos, or if you want to argue with me. I, I, I like arguments, so uh, you can also do that too. Um, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Peace.